we're about to walk the stage. Shall we walk? Yes, please. We're gonna walk and kind of stage on the side. To play such massive stages is just insane. It's just an amazing feeling. That's the real, you know, me. Did you ever see these kind of performances becoming your reality? You're in the booth. Describe that energy, though. It's fun. It's kind of hard to describe. What's it like knowing that all these people are here just to see you? It's definitely, it's definitely very cool. Vegas is always a fun place to play. There's always you know, new people coming in every weekend. It's always a, always a good crowd here. You, you found me, made me into something new. So you've collaborated with Rita Ora. Selena Gomez, Baby, I got these scars. Miguel, huge artist. This is amazing, and I think like Ellie Goulding. We were high and we were so bad. We were when she sings like one word, you know, oh, that's Ellie Goulding. We were young and now I'm older, but I do it all again. Miguel, I saw him at a festival in Norway in like 2011, and ever since that, I've been wanting to work with him even before I, I like had a career. I have like a wish list of people and to actually to be able to work with these people that are on my wish list is just uh, pretty crazy. You started playing the piano when you were six years old. Who introduced you? How did that start? My dad is, uh, has played the piano. He plays the piano. Um, uh, but it was my mom actually like wanted me to start taking piano lessons when I started getting better and starting learning, you know, more of the songs that I wanted to learn. Then it started like becoming more and more fun. It like, like slowly became more and more my, my passion. And, like every day after school, I could just come home. When there was no one, no one home, I could just like play piano for hours. I read that your dad was a big CD collector when you were growing up. Yeah, well, he had definitely had a big yeah, collection of CDs, like Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd, like Billy Joel, like Elton John. I guess I just like grown up listening to so much like different music. Who are some of your influences? It depends. Like in, in the electronic world, when I got into electronic music, like Avicii was the like the reason why I started learning how to produce. When I heard his songs, they just like, I just connected with them in like a different way. All this time I was Wake Me Up is like the biggest song ever. So wake me up when it's all over. When I'm wiser and I'm older. So I just knew that this is, this is what I want to do. So how did you actually start becoming a producer? I got a MIDI keyboard. Um, I think it was a Christmas present for my, for my mom. And then I bought Logic Studio that I've heard from a friend of mine, uh, that was a good software to use. And then I just used YouTube tutorials to like, every, every time I, I didn't know how to do something, I just try to, you know, figure it out on YouTube or just experimenting. So I, th I was just sitting, you know, hours and hours in my bedroom every day. <laughs>
When did you realize that people were actually listening to your music? I mean, the music that you're in your room just kind of making out for the world. Well, it was like slowly, you know, on SoundCloud, you can see like the place. Every time I posted a remix, it got a little bit more place than the previous remix. So the first time I heard you was the Sexual Healing remix. I was actually a student at the time, but I was basically just making music every every day. I wasn't really focusing on school at all. Like, I didn't want to remix it because it was such a classical track. At that time, I got a lot of messages on SoundCloud. There was actually like a lot of people asked me, oh, you got to remix Sexual Healing. And then um, one day I just like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot and see actually if it, if it works out. So I, I posted it. And it's good for us. And I remember I was like nervous posting it because I didn't know if people were gonna hate it or, or love it, but then I saw the reaction. And then and everybody seemed to be very happy about it. I posted basically a remix every month. And then it just got more and more plays and I got more and more followers. And I, I made a Facebook page and that one got a thousand likes and then suddenly 10,000 likes. And it was just, just going upwards. I was looking online for new music. I was on SoundCloud and I came across, you know, Kygo. I immediately hit him up on Facebook. I reached out to him like, hey man, huge fan, love your music, would love to work with you. He basically said, yeah, let's do it. Like, right after a call, it was sort of just like, let's see what happens. I think we're definitely like, yeah, kind of like opposites <laughs> when it comes to like personality. We have like our, our strengths and weaknesses and I make the music and then he promotes it, you know. In the beginning, I just posted, like, as I said, I posted stuff on, on SoundCloud and I was just hoping someone would listen to it. And when he came in and helped me, he was like sending it to every music blog out there. And like that got, got the place up so much, like the, the followers. What are you taking, one, one drop or two drops? I think one works, but uh, with the piano intro, like, that's in the front. You're gonna make it longer. The, the... I think we're just gonna have to bring it down a little bit quicker. But the kind of, the beauty of it is, it doesn't matter if it goes down quicker because you're in the front, so they can still see you. It's stupid if I'm like, bro, you know. Yeah, okay. Describe to me your sound. I always try to, you know, keep it happy. It's like melodic, kind of like chill out. You might hear something like pan flutes and steel drums and stuff like that. People call it Tropical House. I think it's like, a, it's a good name for it. How do you keep up? Is it caffeine or is it adrenaline? Is it a little bit of both? I think it's both, yeah. I definitely, uh, I drink uh, you know, Red Bulls and coffee to you know, keep going. You were invited to play at a nightclub in Paris, but nobody actually knew what you looked like. Yeah, yeah, I'd never posted a photo of myself or anything, so I guess no one really knew anything about me other than I was like, I think I put it in my bio that like, I'm, I'm 22 years old, I'm from Norway, something like that. <laughs> Kygo's real name is Shira Govoldal. That's how you say it in Norwegian. I asked him, how'd you come up with Kygo? It was his username in high school. It's like the beginning of his name and last name, so Kira Govoldal. So he's like, K-Y-G-O. And we met for the first time in Paris and he did his first ever show. And I wasn't even 21 yet, I was 20. And I, I flew all the way over there and I, I think I was a sophomore in college. And I remember the room was actually completely empty and all of a sudden he gets up to play and the entire room was packed. I didn't really know how people were gonna react to my tracks because it was so much slower than every other DJ out there. But after that show, I just knew that this, this is actually, I'm onto something here because people were like crowd surfing and they were like, having the best time ever in the club. We could just tell by the energy and the way they were singing the songs that we had something. And we both looked at each other in the eyes and we go, we're gonna do this forever.
those early remixes, like the Icy Fire remix and Sexual Healing, how did those kind of change the game for you? Well, that was like the remixes was kind of, you know, what built my, my career. I had a sold out US tour only with these remixes that I put up on SoundCloud. The record companies were taking notice and before you had even released original music, they're trying to sign you. It was like a little, almost like a bidding war going on there between their labels. To me, it was like very important when I signed a deal to have like the musical like freedom to do whatever I wanted. I signed a deal with Sony and then I released, you know, Firestone. We're so young, we're so naive, we don't know what's going on, and we're just excited. We're ready to get it. When he signed that deal, I just felt like it was game time. Two years later, you're selling out Barclays. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. <laughs> From the first show, it just like everything just went very fast. How do you prepare yourself both mentally and physically for weekends like this? I try to go to the gym and, and stay healthy. You just get an hour and a half where there's nothing else that matters. It's almost like kind of a, like a meditation. How was yesterday? It was great. Best moment so far. So the one day I missed is the best beach club of the year. It was wow. actually. I think so. Yes, we'll stop by. Yeah, wow! I know he texted. He texted me. He was like, "Oh, I'm so excited, man! I can't wait." I'm like, oh, "I'm not there." <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, was this bachelor party? Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. It was fun. When is the next show? Was it Friday night? Yeah, it's a Friday night. And then Sunday or is it yes. Friday Saturday? It's Friday and Sunday. So if you want, you can work out of the day Friday. But... It's funny, I'm doing a show and I'm already thinking what's happening the next day. I'm thinking what's happening the day after, thinking what's happening the next week. Constantly thinking what can be done better and putting in that effort and time to make sure that everything's gonna be great. For every show that we do, I have to make sure it's perfect. I have to make sure the fireworks are great. So I get a little stressed before the show, so I run around, I'm freaking out a little bit, but it's all in good health. How are you? It's a shame you guys are taking on right now. He likes it nice and quiet, you know? That's how we do the prep. Everyone, shh. She's the only one, there's a lot of talk. He shows energy a different way than I do. I'm a little more, I don't know, I don't know if you noticed, I'm a little more, you know, and he's a little more like quiet, but I know that he's excited. I know that he's grateful of the situation we're in. Just try to concentrate, get into the zone. Vegas, I don't usually know, I get nervous because I play it every weekend. Like these shows, I usually get a little bit nervous before. You guys want to hear a secret? Yeah. We're about to walk the stage. We've played Bell, I think, in four years before you, so we come back headline, really exciting. Out of the way, Jesso. I can't wait to show everybody what we got.
fastest artist to 1 billion streams on Spotify. What is streaming, like the world of social media, SoundCloud, Spotify, what has that meant to your career and your success? I think everything. My career is built on streaming and social media. To be able to reach your whole fan base just by posting something, it's just very, it's just the, the best way to do it. Your debut album, Cloud9, what was it like to release original music for the first time? Yeah, that was, that was, that was a good feeling. Up until that point, I was you know, only doing remixes. And I think actually some people, I saw some people on the internet thought that my artist name was Kaigo Remix. Because I was like, that every song was like Kaigo Remix. Did you feel like you had something to prove at that point? Maybe a little bit, yeah. But I, I wanted to prove that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm able to make my original track as well, yeah. Talk to me about Higher Love, man, because Whitney Houston is a legend. How did that come together? Because she was signed to the same label as I am, and they had this song laying around uh, that she covered in 1990 or something. They never like officially released it. I got sent the track and I was just like, wow, this is, this is crazy. When people hear the track, everyone's immediately happy. When I actually did the music video with Hand of the Lux, I wanted to bring that vibe into the music video. I wanted to make it this dancing choreography, like this happy jumping up and down, like people just coming together and being happy and like constant happy vibes. When I hear it, I just want to like dance. I just want to get out of my chair and dance. The chorus is just so powerful. Whitney Houston is like one of the most legendary artists of all time. Um, so to me, it was just kind of unreal to get the opportunity. Anyone you hope to collaborate with in the future? I think The Weeknd and Ed Sheeran has always been like on, on top of my list. So uh, hopefully I'll, I'll make a song with, with them. We work with a lot of great artists. Sometimes they're out there performing with us, like Justin Gesso. Both of us were just such music lovers, and I feel like we were both trying to find our way to do what we loved, you know? And I think we kind of made this perfect combination where it was like the ultimate dream team, you know? And we're doing what we loved, and, and that has formed into what we've become. On stage at these big festivals, you're playing the piano. I feel like it's a chance to show your artistry. The piano is something I've been doing since I was six years old. That's the real, you know, me. So I feel like it's always a special moment in my sets. If you want to make some noise for yourself, you guys have been amazing tonight. I love you guys. Thank you so much.
Thanks for having us. Sure. Why don't you just take this whole... I might sleep for a little bit. I think you should. You should. Oh, I'm ready, man. We move very fast between shows. We put that pressure on ourselves. It's really because we're doing it for a bigger cause. We're doing it to make our fans happy, and we're doing it to continue to grow the brand. We just landed in Vegas, flew in from Toronto. We got a show in 15 minutes. We got through customs, thank God, Matt. Good job, big guy. Now we got a last show of the night. One weekend, two countries, three shows. Are you exhausted? <sighs> a little bit, yeah. I mean, the lifestyle, it seems unforgiving with the scheduling, with the travel, with the constant shows. Do you ever feel like it's too much? Sometimes, yeah. Like last year, I basically toured from like January till November. At that point, yeah, I definitely felt that it was too much. <laughs> I see like these other DJs, like Steve Oki plays like 200 or something shows a year and I just like, I don't understand how he does it. And Dick Blow as well, I'm not gonna be able to do that. <laughs> when it's all said and done, I think our overall goal is, is to just continue being creative. We wanna leave, you know, something bigger than just Kygo behind. We've created a company, we have a record label. We wanna build an empire together. How do you stay grounded through all this? I talk to my family all the time. I have my girlfriend, the team I have around me now. It's a very good team, They're like good friends. It's just about surrounding yourself with the, with the right people.